All right, welcome back to Nature and Code. We're in chapter three, where we will be talking about genetic drift. So in the last lecture, we established this intuition here um, about coin tossing and about randomness and um, how everything depends on the number of throws and the probabilities of getting uh, a tail or a head. So we drew this example here, this binomial distribution, where we had 10 coin tosses, and these are sort of the, uh, the outcomes, the probabilities that you get five tails, or the probability that you get four tails, or six, or three, and seven, and so on. So let's, take, let's, uh, let's uh, make an, a concrete example. Let's take a look at, uh, at this guy here. Okay, so, so here, right, this is the probability that um, you would have two tails. And correspondingly, if we're talking about 10 throws, right, um, we, would, we would get eight heads. So what is the probability that, that if you throw a coin 10 times, that you'll get two tails, eight heads? Okay, like I said, uh, the, the point really will be to implement this in code, but I just uh, want to make sure we get the correct number uh, and we calculate this beforehand. So um, you have 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 um, coin, coin flips. Um, so th those are going to be either head or tails. Now, first of all, we have to ask ourselves, how many possibilities are there in the first place? Well, assume you would only throw one coin. In that case, right, it could be either heads or tails. So there are two possible outcomes. If you would throw two coins, there will be two times two possible outcomes because you could have uh, head head, you could have head tails, you could have tails head, and you could have um, tails tails. With three, you would get two times two times two, because you could have head head head, you could have head head t, and so on. I mean, you get the idea. With ten, you will actually have ten to the power of ten. Uh, sorry, two to the power of ten possible outcomes which is 1,024. So th uh, flipping 10 coins, there are 1,024 different possible outcomes. Now, how many of those will have eight heads and two tails? So that's actually also easy to uh, calculate. So just, just imagine, here's your, um, your outcome with H's and T's, and basically you will have two T's in here. So how many possible combinations can you have with two T's in here? Well, first, there are 10 possible combinations, um, 10 possible ways to put a T here somewhere. And then once, for each of those, once you have a T here, there are nine possible uh, ways to put uh, the second T somewhere. It's not 10 because one is already occupied with a T. So there are nine, um, nine ways to put the second T here. So you could have something like a T here and T here, and the rest would be filled up with H's. And now 10 times nine, that also includes the fact that you would put the T here first, and that T here is a, a second, uh, because the order doesn't matter. We have to divide this by two. Okay, that's a two. And so that is 45. So there are 45 outcomes where you would have two tails and eight heads. So 45 out of 1,024 possible outcomes. Okay. That equals, if you type that into a calculator, that equals 0 0.0439 and so on. That's good enough in terms of precision. Which means four, in other words, 4.39%. So the probability, just scrolling back here, of that occurring is 
0.5%. And you could calculate it for all of these events here as well. But that's not the point. The point is uh, we want to implement this in code. We want to demonstrate in JavaScript that indeed when you throw 10 coins, the perfect coins, fair coins, that have a 50% chance of tail, 50% chance of head, then uh, in 4.39% of all cases where you throw 10 coins, you will get two tails and eight heads. So let's go ahead and implement this in JavaScript. So let me go over to my text editor and let me start a new document here. So you can uh, do this from scratch as well, or you can just copy over a, an existing document and modify this. I'm gonna start here with the doc type again. I uh, got my HTML tag. And um, just for the sake of um, being consistent, I'm gonna add here a body tag. Although it's not totally necessary because we're gonna have our code, um, whoops, in um, in the head anyways. Okay, my script tag here, close it. And now here I'm gonna develop my JavaScript code. Okay, so the key method um, to understand here is one that comes with JavaScript um, and is available in the browser and it's called math.random. So be sure we understand this because math.random is our friend and we're gonna use this method many, many times. This is sort of your JavaScript equivalent of uh, a, a coin toss even though it actually does something uh, fairly different, but um, it is a random number generator and it returns um, a random floating point number between zero and one. So let's demonstrate that this is actually true. So let's um, have this output in the console. Let's print the result of math random in the console. Okay, so let me go ahead and save this document. And um, because we're in chapter three here, I'm gonna create a new chapter folder, chapter three. And uh, I'm gonna call this coin tossing.html. Okay, so let me save that file again syntax highlighting kicking in. Okay, file self saved. Let me go over to the browser and let me open the file. So chapter three, coin tossing open. Of course, I don't see anything here. That's because I need to look at the JavaScript console. And here is this random number. Okay, so now I'm gonna reload a couple of times. Oh, 0.97, very close to one. 0 0.19, 0 0.57, and so on. You can see that whenever I reload here, I get a different number. And this is a random number between zero and one. All right, let's go back to the code. So if it is truly a random number between zero and one, and each number is equally likely to come up, then on average, this should really, the average of many, many of those math random calls should uh, be 0.5. So let's, um, let's go ahead and write a short program that demonstrates this. So I, I would like to call math random a number of times. And that number I'm gonna just store in a variable. I'm gonna call this repeats, um, let's say a hundred times. And now I would like to, a uh, hundred times I would like to um, throw um, this math random or call this math random method. So let me do this with a loop, okay? So you know now uh, how to implement a loop from the previous uh, chapter. So I'm just simply gonna say 
i equals zero and then as long as i is smaller than this repeats uh, value i'm going to continue and of course i have to make sure to increase uh, i by one after each iteration otherwise i'll get an infinite loop all right so let me call it here math random but actually uh, so what am I going to do with this? Um, well, I want to get the average. So in order to get the average of these 100 math random calls, I have to sum them up, okay? So I'm going to define here uh, a, another variable called sum that I'm going to initialize at value 0. And so here I'm just going to add um, this value. So I'm going to say sum is what you have in sum plus this new math random. Okay, so this is the exact same idea uh, as, as we have here. Whatever we have in i, I'm going to add 1, and I'm going to store this new value into i. Same here. Whatever I have in sum, I'm going to add whatever math random returns, which is a number between 0 and 1, and then I'm going to store the result of that into sum. And now the average, of course, is... Well, the sum divided by the number of repeats. So, and in order for us to see what, to, you know, really understand what this number is, we have to print it, of course. So I'm just going to say the average is and pass on the average as well. All right. So let me save this and go back to the browser, reload the document. The average is 0. 0.5035. That's pretty close to 0. 0.5. Reload, 496. Yeah, it's pretty close too. So you can see these can be pretty close, but sometimes they're actually not that close, right? We have oh, 0. 0.44 here. Well, I mean, it is kind of close, but with 100, um, you know, you get you get quite some variance in there. So let, let's just increase the, uh, the number of repeats here. Okay, let's do a thousand. Reload. Still, still quite some variance, but yeah, we don't get those 0.44 anymore. Uh, 0.48 occasionally, but no 0.44. Interesting. So let's increase it again by an order of magnitude to 10,000. Save it and reload it. So now it's always very close to uh, 0.5. I mean, I see 4.9, but I don't get any 4.8s anymore. And so on. So you get, the higher this value, the closer you will get to uh, 0.5. And by the way, it's stunning, isn't it? I mean, uh, we're doing 10,000 iterations here and your browser doesn't break a sweat. I mean, it's instant. That's how fast things are. Okay, so uh, we're 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 quite we're quite advanced here. We have used a um, a loop a for loop. Um, we have called this math random, and we have established that the average um, is 0.5, and that uh, math random returns a value between 0 and 1. So now we can use this knowledge to, uh, to develop a, a JavaScript code that throws or flips coins, and we can then calculate how often we'll get a 2. Uh, we get 2 heads or 2 tails. It's the same thing, but uh, how often we get 2 tails and 8 heads. So let's do this uh, in the next lecture. See you there.